First of all, on behalf of the participants of the IAIS conference, uh, it's a pleasure and honor to speak to you. Thank you very much. We've heard you talk a lot about inclusive finance over the years. Now we're talking about inclusive insurance. What is inclusive insurance? Well, it will be like inclusive finance, but more focused on the insurance side. And that is giving the possibility to every man and woman to uh, be able to protect themselves against unforeseen risks, against uh, shocks, external shocks, be it health, drought, uh, uh, no rain, uh, so that they can actually carry on with their lives. I was one time in a visit in Africa and um, I was talking to a family and because of the illnesses of their kid, they had to pay very high medical bills. And that meant that they had to basically sell their livestock by which they had milk and they could, that was their assets. They could sell and actually buy more food. So that meant for this family that they went from two meals a day to one meal a day. So my question would be if that family would actually have some health insurance. Um, you know, they could actually at least uh, protect themselves about all those risks that they cannot deal with them now. It's also about stability of their life, their daily, day to day life. It is about stability of their lives and actually sort of smoothening consumption, because that's basically what happens all the time. So when, you know, families work so hard, so hard to make ends meet, to build their assets, you know, is it, you know, two goats, three goats, four goats, or one cow to two cows. Which is a huge change. But which is a family. huge change for these families. They work extremely hard and then try to get the children, you know, to get an education and do everything right. But then something unexpected happens and then it all flies away. And I think it's very important that we think about uh, these issues. Like, for example, the World Health Organization has stated that every year, 100 million people fall back into poverty because of lack of health insurance, because something happens and they really have to sell everything they have to pay those bills. So having insurance can be a life changer for people, you know, for the good or for worse. Absolutely. And it will be also a way to protect their own family, but also their assets in which they work so hard to actually get to, and which means basically their income, their future income. Yeah. These are mostly low income or very low income people. Uh, insurance companies are for profit. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's in it for them? I mean, can they make money out of these people? What, what's in it for them? Well, today we know financially excluded, there are 2.5 billion adults around the world. That's half the adult That's population. That's an incredible amount of people. That's an incredible amount of people. That's to even the most basic financial services. And I would say that insurance is a little bit more uh, developed than you know having a transactional account or a payments account. So that would mean more than 2.5 billion adults that do not have insurance. So the market is huge. I would say in the short term, yes, you could say it's not a, uh, the most uh, uh, enticing market, but in the long term it is, because it will grow. And also with innovations and technology, we can actually reduce the cost by actually making these products even more profitable. And we've actually seen that even in payments. I mean, we're not relying anymore from brick and mortar uh, type of banks, we're actually having mobile phones doing the payments for us, which actually has reduced the cost and actually given some room for profit making in the lower segment of populations. So eventually also for, for profit insurance companies, there is a opportunity there among these two and a half billion people. There is a huge opportunity it. there, absolutely. In the long term, there's a huge opportunity there. One day I was in Tanzania and I was talking to women and they were trying to get some health insurance. And uh, so basically she got the health insurance and after a year she wasn't sick. So she didn't go to the doctor. So she didn't use, of course, any, any doctor's appointment. So she said, well, um, I want my money back. I want my premiums back <laughs> because I didn't use my insur my, my doctors. <laughs> yeah. So I so, said, well, that's not really how it works. Yeah. So the issue for the insurer was, okay, how do I do to actually get her still be loyal to the insurance in the long term, because that's the only way it works, and still for her to sort of, you know, say, well, if I use, if I go to the doctor, maybe, you know, that they're not, I'm not going to get my insurance money back. And then, so these mentality issues, I think that's a whole education that needs to be extremely important. It's a, it's a very important issue, because even if the need is enormous, sometimes the demand for the product is very low because of lack of education. Yeah. You also gave once a very nice example from Rio de Janeiro, a visit there. I mean, you met people who wanted insurance and it was hard. What was the problem? 
Well, I think I think that example sort of outlines how important it is to understand customers and their way of living. So the CEO of an insurance company in Rio de Janeiro um, was explaining to me, you know, there's most of the low income housing is done in favelas, which are basically on the side of the mountains or the morros, like they say it in, in Rio de Janeiro. And you have very big rains. And because there's not the construction has not been very well done, you have a lot of mudslides in which houses go down. Down with the mudslide. So he wanted to come up with an insurance product that would actually insure people their homes. So the need was enormous. People were actually sort of stating this. But the problem is that the demand was not. They wouldn't buy it. And why? Because he realized that, you know, even though the grandfather probably hold, held the property rights on that piece of land, many families had built different rooms add on, on that add piece. Add on, add on, add on, add on. And as you know, yeah. you always see they're always building up. So he had to come up with an insurance product that would actually uh, cater to this need, that actually the property was maybe on one person, but the premium would be shared by many families. And uh, so he did that, and the product just took off. Can you talk a little bit also, you're talking a lot about private families. What about small entrepreneurs? I mean, they need financing, mm -hmm. right? And they need very often insurance. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Is, is that the same problem as with private families? It is very much the same problem. And uh, it's even a harder problem because sometimes uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, you know, they're informal. Uh, most of them uh, are. And they don't even have access to the most basic uh, financial products, so let alone insurance. So uh, that is definitely a big issue. And uh, what we've seen, actually, in most of these small and medium-sized enterprises, when they're insured, they actually get better access to credit. Why? Because they're seen as less riskier. So I think the need and the combination between insurance products and credit products should, it's something that we should look even further. It's extremely important for the development of a country. Absolutely. I mean, they can employ people, they make money, they make a profit, that's what it's terrific. For employment, for development, uh, reducing inequality, SMEs are extremely important and uh, you know, insurance could play a very, very important role. You've been involved in this issue for a number of years now. What has been achieved? Is it a successful journey? Well, I would I would say I would hope to say that it is, uh, and I think it is. Um, actually, when I started uh, uh, talking about these issues uh, in 2005, everybody was speaking about only microcredit. And nowadays, people do understand it's not only credit that people need. You know, there's a host of financial products that people need. You know, insurance being a very important one. Um, so that's one thing. And the other issue that you know, people have become to realize, it is not only the micro, but also the more small and medium-sized enterprises that also need a host of products to you know, develop, to invest, so that they can actually employ more people. So I think the understanding is there. Um, I think now 50 countries have uh, launched the National Strategies for Financial in in Inclusion, which I'm extremely proud of. 56 countries, yeah, have yeah, actually stated there. Uh, you know, policies for financial education, which is a very important part. I think part. Peru is a good example, right? Peru is a great example yeah. for consumer protection and for financial education. And uh, what I think is very exciting is that uh, nowadays countries are learning from each other. I think Peru, for example, is a very good example how financial education can actually help demand and uh, help the stability of a whole sector. You see actual results. We see actually, there's actually Tanzania. Um, I visited Tanzania when they had 20% of the population included, financially included, and they stated a sort of national uh, strategy for financial inclusion, and they went from less than 20% to 57% in four years. Four years, surpassing their own target of 50% 50, 50 in 2016. So um, it's very exciting. And I think that would also. Um, We've, we've had a fantastic innovation that nowadays I can send money to you with a mobile phone, which makes it really very accessible and very affordable for people to do and to have. Without the middleman and have, you Without know, the middleman, the without the brick and mortar yeah. bank of actually having to be there with a, for example, there's very little population in a rural area. Nowadays you can do it with a mobile phone and that opens a huge amount of opportunities to actually give that person through that mobile phone different types of products. That empowers people. And that will empower people. And they will include it in the economic system. And I think that's very exciting. Having all that new technology also opens a window of opportunities also for insurance. What can insurance supervisors do? I mean, a lot of these people are watching this, this videotape. Uh, what can they do in this field? Well, data. 
uh, facilitate data to actually examine risks better, to understand the market and the clients be better is extremely important. I think uh, trying to talk to the private sector and entice to sort of go down market is also very, very helpful. And third, uh, be open to innovation. Because I think, you know, a lot of them are. Okay. And I think that the organization that we now all gather together has been very open to innovation. And uh, they've been, themselves as a standard setting body, they've actually been partnering with implementation partners to see, you know, how different innovations take uh, practice in, in given countries. So I think that be open to innovations, like mobile money is one innovation. And a lot of central banks have been very open. And I think that in terms of designing new products for people, like this Rio de Janeiro example, um, or even having new, type, new types of distribution, with, like with mobile money, we, has, we have to be open for innovations because otherwise we're not going to make it to those 2.5 billion plus adults. What would be your central message for the people in this, this conference? I mean, if you have just one message you could convey. I think the standard setting bodies have done a, an incredible amount of work on the financial inclusion area. And I've seen the, the growth of interest in this area. I mean, they have changed their core principles. They have actually, actually written guidelines. And uh, so that's very, very positive. I think they, it'd be fantastic if they continue to do so. I think it would be great if they could you know, partner with implementation uh, 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 people so that can actually see how we can improve the guidelines even further to actually even make it, uh, you know, on the practical uh, perspective, you know, more uh, helpful. And um, like I said, data, education, be innovative and try to help people to learn from each other. So that has been achieved a long way to go. I think that we have a long way to go, but we've actually done a lot already. And I think that we should continue on this path. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you.